Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. Вы слушаете программу Ушанка Show. My name is Sergey, and I used to be armed and dangerous back in the USSR. So today we're going to talk again about declassified KGB documents from 1967 about events in Soviet Ukraine. This document was discovered by Ukrainian historian Eduard Andrushenko. I'll post link to his Facebook page below this video. My special thanks и огромное спасибо to all my supporters on Patreon.com. Thank you, comrades. It's greatly appreciated. So this is the continuation of my previous video, Secret KGB Files, 1967, Citizens Uprising in Priluki, Soviet Ukraine. So this is uprising against local police brutality. So pretty much the Soviet Lives Matter movement. So once again, we're returning to the small town of Priluki, population about 60,000 people located in the northern Ukraine. But before we start, I would like to uh, answer a couple of comments and questions that uh, people posted below my first video about this event. The first one is from Jana Ramanchenka. So by her name, I could tell she's probably originally from Ukraine or Russia. This is so stupid to compare the uprising in Priluki to what's going on now in the US especially by reading the documents from one side without showing the other side, victim's family, and trying to find out what's really happened there. Actually, militia had beaten to death that man, and burning the militia department was a very right thing to do. People were fighting for their rights. Don't compare USSR militia and US police. They are totally different. I don't know, it's probably can be the whole series of videos comparing uh, Soviet militia and United States police, but I'm not sure why this lady think it's stupid to compare President and Preluki and what's going on in the United States. In both cases, police arrested a person, person got killed while being in custody or died, you know, from heart attack or meningitis and people got upset and then we have buildings being destroyed uh, police stations torched i see a lot of similarities i mean uh, both soviet militia and american police were created to protect law and order and actually soviet militia was militia just by name those were professionals paid by the government to do their job. So militia, you know, it, it was technically police. At the same time, like local police here, for example, in Michigan, uh, we pay them through property taxes. So it's more like militia and we elect our sheriff. So we kind of are more connected to police than we used to be collected to the local militia back in the Soviet Union. All right, next question. Sounds like people with ties to the old Ukrainian insurgent army. After World War II, they ran an active campaign of attacking KGB police and party members and facilities. Having the balls to attack police stations sounds like Ukrainian insurgent army to me. I don't think that's the case. Uh, Ukrainian insurgent army, or as they say in Ukrainian, Ukrainska Povstanchiska Armia, the areas of operation uh, were Volinia, Polesia, Galicia, so Western Ukraine, uh, Carpathian Mountains, Podolia, so most of the areas that used to be part of the Poland, then they got occupied by the Soviet Union, they got taken over by Germany, then occupied, taken over by Soviet Union again. Uh, and they were acting pretty much from 1942 till 1949, well, they're active, and then here and there till 1956, they were fighting the Soviets. Uh, events were described as 1967, it's in northern Ukraine, so there's, it's nothing to do with UPA. Actually, while searching uh, about this topic, about Priluki, I stumbled upon a witness account. So that's actually not from the police point of view, but from the locals. And the guy mentioned something very interesting. He said uh, th there used to be an area in Priluki, in this town, that local people were always having problems with uh, local police. So that was like a Soviet ghetto. But the difference that in, uh, they historically 
were people who had their own little businesses. They were like artisans of so people making things, you know, making money, uh, which, you know, illegal in the Soviet Union to produce something on your own and sell. But they were, you know, probably making moonshine, making some equipment, maybe clothing. So they were constantly harassed by police, by militia. So, you know, in Soviet Union ghetto, it's where police doesn't let you to work. They don't want you to work because it's illegal. Um, so they always had trouble with police, and this killing happened. Uh, the guy actually lived in that area, so that's kind of what kind of triggered this whole uprising because they, they were fed up with being arrested, harassed, and now it was like, you know, major event that everyone just pretty much got enough of it and they started creating serious trouble. Okay, so finally back to our KGB report. This is a next report. So first one was dated from October 9. This one is follow-up from the October 10 of 1967. So once again addressed to the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine, a special announcement. On October 8 of this year, in the town of Priluki, Chernigov region, Kuligan elements created troubles. I don't know how to translate it more, like troubles, uh, which was reported to, um, once again, to Communist Party of Ukraine on October 9 in uh, communique number 734H. So that happened October 8. On October 9, so next day, at 10 o'clock in the morning, by the building of Priluki City Department of Militia, slowly started gathering small uh, groups of uh, citizens. By 2 o'clock p.m., they had around 200 people there. And it says, in some periods of time, total crowds uh, uh, were up to 350 to 400 people. That's quite a bit of people, considering how small the town is. Around 10 to 15 people uh, approached the doors of the building and demanded to uh, have the police chief to come out, or like actually to be given to people, as well as the group of the militia officers that arrested on October 1st uh, this late psycho guy and his cousin Kuzmenka. So they actually, large crowd of people by the police department demanding, uh, let us see the police chief, chief as well as the people who arrested and beat up, I guess, this late uh, citizen psycho and his cousin. So it definitely sounds like People didn't buy the version that a person passed away because it had meningitis. I mean, if you had a severe bruises probably on your face and body, it definitely tells a different story. It doesn't specify in the document, but that's my guess because for the second day in a row, uh, hundreds of people gathered by the police department. Then it says here that the first secretary of a uh, communist party of the local city, the Department of Communist Party, uh, Comrade Marchenka showed up, as well as uh, Comrade Skapienka, who is like procuror, so it's like a judge. Uh, oh, so there's some serious uh, party, uh, local party leaders and prosecution leaders came to talk to the people, as well as Presidatelis Polkoma, I even don't know how to translate that, so another Comrade Drobot, so they were talking to these folks. So there's a uh, Soviet apparatchiks explain what happened, the whole uh, substitute of the events, and then they told them that they're going to create a special com committee to investigate what happened, and then ask the people to just uh, go back home. So now they, the government agrees, like, hey, uh, we agree with you, something probably happened that we need to investigate. So uh, some people left, but around from 100 to 150 people uh, remained at the building. So not many people left. Uh, so they actually got closer to the building and some of them continued to demand to let them see the local police chief. 
because of that situation, uh, they brought uh, military, uh, they brought Druzhina, KGB workers, and the rest of police, and they were uh, pushing people away from the police building. So, quite interesting. So, fortunately, uh, there was no shooting, no bloodshed, and Ukrainians generally kind of, I would say, mild people. They're not hot-blooded as maybe Georgians or Armenians or Azerbaijanis. So here they said by 7 p.m. crowd slowly dissipated and by 9 p.m. on October 9 there was no one um, left. Uh, during uh, initial investigation uh, they located the police. They figured out 11 uh, people that were like steering trouble. Uh, and also they arrested 11 people from uh, Kuligan elements. They were actually uh, creating uh, resistance to the military patrols. Uh, all the arrested people were moved. That sense says they were moved out uh, from Nezhen. So they arrested them and moved somewhere, some, them somewhere else. And here's kind of interesting part because it shows... Uh, government reaction to this event so they kind of trying to calm people down while trying to locate who is the main troublemakers and try to arrest them and remove them in the same time they removed all the uh, people who were locked up in the local KPZ so it's a camera like initial arrest place was like a jail cells so they got them all moved out of out of town they became guarding uh, post offices as well as telegraph offices and radio station. So they not screwing around uh, with participation of the local uh, Soviet party active members. They began uh, round the clock uh, patrol of the streets, especially the area surrounding the police station. And by the end, it's kind of the classic Soviet way. So the local factories, especially, first of all, at the after Transpony Park. So this is like a truck outfit where this late uh, psycho worked. So they're gonna organize corresponding explaining work. They call разъяснительная работа. So that's party leaders and maybe KGB officers gonna show up, have a gatherings, and they're gonna explain workers like, hey. This is what actually happened. There's no reason to be worried about. So that's разъяснение работа. It's a popular saying, expression in the Soviet Union when they're trying to kind of like calm people down and explain them what actually happened. And it says they're going to uh, continue reporting about uh, how the investigations uh, being carried on. And it's signed by the uh, chief of the KGB of Ukraine, uh, Comrade Nikitchenko. And of course, they described the events in Priluki um, weren't the only uprising in the Soviet Union. In fact, I found out that when Gorbachev came to power, he requested a list of similar events that happened in the you know, 50s and 60s and 70s. So to kind of get idea what is actually is going on in the country. And I mean, there's a lot of things were happening from basic like sol soldiers that... Uh, they came from Russia or Ukraine, for example, and they uh, located in maybe Baltic states or somewhere in Asia. They're trying to date local girls. Local guys get upset. Fighting started. Some people get killed. Then, of course, locals uh, getting mad, and, of course, it goes out of control. Another event I stumbled upon was happened in Nikolaev, uh, southern Ukraine. So that's a big port. So local workers refused to load a ship with grain that was uh, heading to Cuba because they had a horrible shortage of food in town and they got very upset that Soviet government is uh, loading ships with grain to send to Cuba while uh, local stores are empty. So they ups got upset and they refused. Uh, so they started a strike in the Soviet Union refusing to do their job because why are you feeding Cubans when we don't have food for ourselves? Okay, comrades, so this is all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe learned something new. As always, don't forget to like it, share with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon.
До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet